Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I am your host, Neil Howard. So glad that you could join us again today. In the world of medicine, there are many, many uh, disciplines that one could choose. One could choose to uh, become a surgeon or a general practitioner or maybe someone dealing with the, uh, the elderly or kids. Uh, our guest in studio today chose not traditional medicine, but uh, the art of chiropractic. And she's here with us today as a graduate um, from Moorhead State University in Kentucky and also from Logan University in St. Louis, Dr. Sarah Horsley, doctor of chiropractic. Uh, she's returning to us with us today to talk a little bit about um, what is important uh, as far as her current chiropractic uh, endeavors. How are you doing today, Dr. Horsley? I'm doing great. How about you? Doing really well. Thank you so much for returning with us today, Dr. Sarah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, you know, we, we talked with you a little bit uh, in a segment when you were here before about um, why you chose chiropractic. Um, you grew up around mm -hmm. traditional medicine, but uh, there were some things that happened, uh, I guess, close to your senior year uh, in Moorhead State University in Kentucky that uh, steered you away from traditional medicine and led you down a path of chiropractic. Am I right about that? That is correct. Yeah. So, um, once again, you know, what... Um, what was it that happened during your senior year that turned you away? I mean, it's not in, in a negative way, but at least in a in a decision making sort of way about where you wanted your medical uh, life to lead you. Well, just after shadowing so many different specialties, I just couldn't find one that was a good fit for me. I didn't just feel a connection, and I shadowed pretty much every specialty there was to be shadowed. I just really wanted more of a hands on approach to treating a patient mm -hmm. and. Um, my dad was seeing a chiropractor at the time, and she he was kind of telling her about the struggle I was having on finding a you know, future for me. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, have her come shadow me. This really, I didn't really think she'll love it. And I shadowed her and just absolutely fell in love. This this doctor, uh, did she suggest any uh, any type of uh, special training or any special location that, that you should go and train or anyone special that you should train under? She suggested that I go to Logan in St. Louis. She said that's where she went, and she said that she loved it. It's close to home and just a phenomenal school. Now, you went to school. Uh, you got a, a degree in biology in Kentucky. You went to school for mm -hmm. chiropractic in uh, Missouri. Uh, are you allowed to practice anywhere in the United States or in the world, for that matter? I do. I just have to get my, my – I'm probably not in the world. I'm sure there's some other uh, stipulations that you have to go through, but anywhere in the United States. Um, there's certain board scores that you have to get for certain states, uh, like North Carolina, you have to have a higher score. And my board score was high enough to practice in any state. I would just have to apply for my license if I decided right. to move. Okay, so each state has different licensing uh, procedures. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes. And um, as when it comes to specialization, um, I know that some doctors, you know, as I mentioned earlier, specialize in, in pediatrics or geriatrics or foot doctors, mm -hmm. uh, for that matter, ENTs. Uh, does the practice, the art of chiropractic, have specialties divided within it as well, or is it all inclusive? It does have certain specialties. Uh, you can't really advertise those, those specialties. It depends on, on what state. Uh -huh. So in the state of Kentucky, you can only say that you can only advertise that you specialize in orthopedics or radiology, and you have to go to additional courses for that. Okay. Um, but you can, in chiropractic school, you can take certain classes that are considered specialties, uh -huh. so elective training you're still, you know, practicing chiropractic, still loving it, uh, what you loved so many years ago, you're still uh, loving just as much today. What are some of the important things about chiropractic that are that are near and dear to you? What are the, Say, I guess, let's talk briefly about maybe the three things that are most important to you in uh, your current chiropractic uh, efforts and your practice as a whole. Well, first and foremost, it would be the patient. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, this is, I can't think of a more rewarding career for myself than this, than having somebody come in and have so much pain. They're having to walk with a cane. They, they aren't able to go to their, their granddaughter's wedding because they're in so much pain and then have, get them adjusted and have them feel amazing and walk out of your office without a cane. Um, that's just an, an amazing feeling for me. So I wouldn't be anywhere without the amazing patients and being able to get them better. Okay. Now, aside uh, from the patients, I mean, you, are you a, one woman practice or, or do you uh, have assistance with you as well or how does that work we have there uh, at our clinic location there, there are two doctors mm -hmm. and then we work under the owner and the owner actually works at the other clinic location uh, okay. we have quite a few staff uh, we have several CAs we have a marketer um, a clinic manager um, and the staff they're just amazing to work with um, 
they they treat they treat us like family. They treat the doctors like family. Um, they treat the patients like family. They just go above and beyond with their jobs. The doctors would be nothing without them. Now you mentioned having CAs. I'm assuming those are chiropractic assistants. Yeah, just like yes, that's okay. correct. Um, were you a chiropractic assistant before you became a full fledged chiropractor? I was not. Okay. Is that um, has that ever been a requirement, or has it become a requirement, or is it at all? Uh, no. So, some some students will do it. They'll work in other offices as receptionists or assistants just to kind of get more more knowledge, but it's not a requirement at all. If you're a chiropractic assistant, do you get um, bonus points or like extra credit uh, if you decide to attend, say, a, a school like Logan in in Missouri? I'm sure it would help you out um, in, in the courses because mm-hmm. uh, you would already have uh, a general knowledge of, of what to expect and what's expected out of you. Okay, so, so I we... guess in, in a way you would have the upper hand. Okay, okay, a little bit of a, a boost, a leg up, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So we, we've we talked briefly about uh, the importance of the patients, uh, your love for the patients, mm-hmm. the feeling of, of um, I guess, satisfaction and, and, and helping when someone comes in with mm-hmm. a problem and they leave having had that problem alleviated. We've talked also about your, your staff and how much they care. Um, is there anything else uh, in your current practice that, that stands out as something that uh, really makes you uh, happy and, and proud to get up each and every morning? Well, actually, once you get that patient healthy, the, the other most important thing would be just, just keeping them, keeping them pain-free, keeping them have a, a happy, healthy life. Um, that's where, where maintenance care would come in, where you have the patient kind of like going to the dentist and getting your teeth cleaned and checked out. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want you to come back, you know, ever so often just to make sure your spine's in good health and to make sure that you're staying pain-free and that you're feeling good. Um, and then to see a patient that you that was in that such severe shape and have them come back a year later and still feel great and still able to do you know whatever they want to do is a really great feeling as well. Now, as we wrap up this uh, segment, Dr. Sarah, is chiropractic mm-hmm. always a recommendation to uh, alleviate a problem, or can someone choose to uh, undergo chiropractic simply to to continue feeling as, as good as they are? Oh, definitely. If, if you're still feeling great, I would still want you to get adjusted just to prevent future episodes. Like, for an example, um, chiropractic can help with allergies, and I have pretty bad allergies. Well, I get adjusted, you know, once a week, every other week, just to keep from having a really bad allergy attack. And I know if I go too long, my allergies will flare up. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Sarah, it's been great talking with you today. Um, Would you encourage uh, others uh, seeking a a career in the medical profession to, uh, to just look into chiropractic? Absolutely. It's a really great place to work. Really, really good place. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Our guest in studio today has been Dr. Sarah Horsley, Doctor of Chiropractic, practicing in George County, Kentucky, a graduate uh, with a science uh, with a bachelor's of science degree in biology at Moorhead State University, also a graduate of Logan University in St. Louis, and she's been here with us today talking about the the, the things in in her practice and her life that that make chiropractic such a rewarding uh, career. It's been great having you with us here today, Doctor Horsley. Thank you. Thank you so much. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm, and you can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes.